Let's take a look at high availability, also known as HA, and explain what that means as it's an important concept when designing and deploying workloads in the public cloud. To begin with, you need to understand what an SLA is. And an SLA is essentially an agreement with the business and the application teams on the expected performance and availability of a specific service. So you will often hear this term come up over and over again when IT is saying to the application team, hey, what are your requirements? What is your SLA around the service? So I can see if I can architect the appropriate components to meet your demands. Here are some general SLA practices that you should follow. One, define the SLAs for every single workload that makes up the application. One of the biggest problems is on dependency mapping. And that is that you might have these internal and external dependencies that the application relies on that perhaps you haven't completely mapped out. So even if you architect and design and build, you know, the most highly available application for your for the pieces you control, but you're dependent on other, you know, workloads running in the environment, that's going to ultimately affect your, your SLA as a whole. Identify single points of failure. Again, one item in the whole stack could cause your whole SLA to change. An example, you know, you have a workload that requires four nines availability, 99.99%, but it depends on a service that is only available 99.9% .9 of the time. That's going to change your SLA overall. Some key terms you need to understand when you're thinking about availability and SLAs are as follows. One, the mean time to recovery, also known as MTTR. This is the average time to recover the service from an outage. So you have an outage, how long is it going to take to get that service back online? In addition, we have mean time between failures. So how long does a business expect to go between various outages? So this is the average time between those outages. And then these two are the more common ones, recovery point objective. This is the interval of time in which data could be lost during the recovery. So for example, a five minute RPO means up to five minutes of data could have been lost you know, when we recover that service and recovery time objective, this on the, in the contrast is what is the time it's going to take to actually recover that service and to get it back online. So that's the recovery time objective. So the business might say, hey, if it goes out, I need it back online within 10 minutes. That's my recovery time objective and I don't want to lose any more than a minute of data. So that means we have to be backing up and making sure data is continuously, you know, replicated somewhere else so we can get it back pretty quickly as well. And when we're thinking about HA, we also need to think about disaster recovery and fault tolerance as these come into play as well. Fault tolerance to begin with, this is redundancy that's built into the services that you consume so that if one component fails, another is simply going to take its place. And we'll have an example of that shortly. Uh, but this reduces the impact when disasters occur. Disaster recovery in contrast, it shouldn't be confused with high availability. This is more about planning for a catastrophic failure of a workload. Maybe an entire region goes out. You know, maybe, you know, you've got on-premises to cloud failover. So again, maybe you have a whole disaster on-premises and you need to, you know, recover that in the cloud. That's more on disaster recovery and also includes a component of automation and orchestration to bring those workloads back online in a more automated fashion. And that, again, helps to meet some of these RTO, RPO objectives in the event of a complete disaster. If we look at some HA examples, hopefully this will kind of solidify the knowledge around this for you. Well, one, a host outage is a good example for HA. So when an underlying host, say in VMware on-premises or in the public cloud, one of your Azure underlying hypervisor hosts that your VM is sitting on has a failure, the virtual machine will automatically be restarted on another host. Now, you might have a blip of an outage, depending on how your application is configured, but ultimately that gets restarted on another host. Availability sets and zones further increase this availability. So for example, you could have two VMs running in an availability set or two availability zones. And what that means is that if one VM host goes down, that's hosting the VMs, the other VM is not sitting on the underlying host. It's sitting on a separate host or in a separate data center in the same region. And so higher availability comes into effect because we've got those technologies that we're using to make sure that our VMs are separated out and are on separate pieces of hardware to increase availability. Another example is a cross-region deployment. This is where you might deploy an application and configure it to be highly available across regions. So when a service in one region has an outage, the traffic can continue to run 
in the second region. Basically, that traffic comes through a traffic manager. So the users hit the traffic manager. It tells them to go to region A or region B. And if region A is completely out, then traffic manager can just redirect them to region B. So everybody's coming into another region now. They might get some performance impact depending on how your application is configured. But ultimately, you've got some additional availability options there. So with that, that concludes this lecture and hopefully hits home to you on high availability.